Hello everyone, welcome to AWS Tutorials. In AWS Tutorials, you learn about AWS services. Today we are going to talk how you can configure Amazon Redshift to have continuous data ingestion from S3 bucket. So let's get started. So let's try to understand why we need to copy data from Amazon Redshift, uh, data to Amazon Redshift from uh, S3 bucket. So generally, uh, people who use Amazon Redshift uh, for their data warehouse purposes, they have to bring data from external data sources. And most of the guys um, try to use a mechanism where they actually uh, bring data from external data sources to S3 bucket. Uh, and this they can complete uh, using any ETL pipeline or they can simply export data from Amazon S3 as from uh, external data source and then upload to S3 bucket. And once they have bring their data to Amazon S3 bucket, then they can actually copy that data to Amazon Redshift. So this is a very popular mechanism if someone is trying to bring data to Amazon Redshift bucket, uh, sorry, Amazon Redshift, that they use Amazon, uh, that they use um, S3 bucket as a intermediate storage before the data is copied to uh, Redshift. And if you try to make this process a little more sophisticated or more real, then basically it is a two-step process. That first you uh, bring data from external data source to uh, S3 uh, raw area. And again, uh, as I mentioned earlier, you can uh, do this using um, ETL pipeline or simply data export and upload to S3 bucket. And then uh, once data comes to S3 bucket, then you might want to clean your data, curate your data, get rid of nonsense uh, from the data, and then move that data to uh, a curated area in the same, in, in S3 bucket. And then from that curated area, you upload it to uh, Amazon Redshift. Uh, and again, uh, when you're trying to um, move data from raw to curated, uh, you have, uh, well, most of the time people use a kind of script or ETL job but you can also use tools like AWS Glit, uh, Glue Data Brew to do uh, a manual uh, curation of your data as well. Now, uh, once the data is Amazon S3 uh, curated area, then of course uh, that, 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 is, that, that data is considered ready to be uploaded to Amazon Redshift. And you can do it in basically two ways. One is that you can manually run uh, a, a, an Amazon Redshift copy command uh, in, in the cluster and you can copy data from S3 bucket. Or uh, if you want to make it uh, automatic, then it was a, a little job, not very complex, but still, still, a, still, a, still a job where you will probably create a Lambda function which will trigger when a new data comes to S3 bucket. And then uh, that Lambda function will simply call a Redshift data API, which will run the copy command. And then it will upload data to Redshift. So basically, there were two mechanisms available uh, from curated area to Redshift. Either you run a manual um, copy command or, uh, or you um, create uh, uh, an automation using uh, S3 bucket events, Lambda, and Redshift data API. And if you talk about continuous data ingestion to Amazon Redshift, uh, this feature basically simplifies this last part I talked about. So if you try to configure your Amazon Redshift in a such a way that whenever my data comes to S3 bucket, it should get automatically copied to Redshift cluster database. What you can do with this new feature is that you can simply configure a copy job uh, in Amazon Redshift. Now keep this in mind, it's not a copy command, but it's a copy job. So copy command has existed for a long time in Redshift. And the earlier approach I talked about, you are running a copy command, either manually or through automations to copy data. Now we are talking about creating a copy job in Amazon Redshift, which you can use to automatically copy data from S3 bucket to Redshift as and when data comes to S3 bucket. Okay, so it's a very simplified way of creating automation. So earlier you were creating automation by hooking it to a S3 bucket, launching a Lambda function, and then calling a Redshift API, which needs a little development and configuration both. Uh, in this case, all you need to do is simply create a job, and that job will take care of automated data 
ingestion to Amazon Redshift from the S3 bucket. So let's try to understand how you can create such job. Job is pretty straightforward, to be very honest. I mean, like if you, this is the syntax of a job. So all you're saying is that copy and then your copy command. And this copy command is the same copy command you have been using so far with the Redshift uh, uh, cluster uh, to copy data from S3 bucket to uh, Amazon Redshift database. Uh, and then you're simply creating that into a job. So you say job create, and this is the job name. And then you can uh, simply put auto on and auto off. And when you put auto on, then what happens is that um, uh, as and when data comes to S3 bucket, using this copy command, it gets automatically copied to the Redshift cluster. And as I mentioned earlier, that earlier you have to do a couple of things to make this automation work. Now what you need to do is simply create this copy job and you are done. I mean, hardly a couple of seconds of work. I mean, like minutes, okay, not seconds. So let's try to see some of the examples of this uh, copy job. Uh, so let's see a few examples which I have taken from uh, actually uh, AWS documentation. Uh, so one is uh, it's saying that, hey, let's copy um, uh, data from this particular folder in the S3 bucket to this particular table. This is the IAM role, which is going to authorize uh, Redshift cluster to read data from the S3 bucket. Um, and then this whole copy command, I am convert. So first three lines are basically copy command. And then what I'm saying is this is like my copy job and auto on. So first three lines are the copy command which I'm converting into a job and I'm putting auto on. That means now with this job, as and when data comes to staging folder, it will be automatically copied to this particular table without doing anything else. Yeah. Another example uh, where you can see more uh, elaborated uh, copy command. So I'm saying, okay, data from this bucket uh, folder uh, goes to this table using this role. Uh, it's a it's a it's a JIP data uh, delimiter del is this one. Um, uh, I'm not very sure what empty as null uh, exactly means. I, I need to see the documentation. Uh, it's working in this particular region. So you see, you can, you, it, it is more elaborated copy command with some more configuration information. Uh, another one, it's saying that, okay, I'm copying from this folder to this table, this IAM role, data format is auto. Ignore the header because that is uh, column names. Uh, my delimiter is comma, and then ignore the blank lines, and this is the region. So basically, in all these examples, you can see that first few lines are your copy commands, same traditional Redshift copy command, and then all you're doing is converting that into a job. Now, hope you understand this with this example what and how simple and how easy it is to create. Now, um, this copy job, you can uh, start and stop. So uh, as you say that, you can say, uh, suppose you created a copy job and say, I want to manually run it. Um, not that you need to, probably for testing purpose, right? You want to manually run it, you can manually run the uh, copy uh, copy job. Um, suppose you have passed your job. Suppose you have stopped your job and now you want to manually run it, then you can you can you can use this command. Uh, and second is suppose you say uh, you have put uh, your job as uh, auto on and now say no, I want to disable my job because probably you want to change your job name or you want to uh, do something else, then you, you can also uh, change your job to auto off and which will basically uh, pause or disable the uh, copy uh, job. So basically you can start and stop your job um, uh, once it is created. Um, it's very important that you keep an eye on how my copy job is is, is running uh, uh, and uh, are there any exceptions uh, if you want to see any uh, any history of um, history of the job uh, then uh, you need to look into certain system tables for that so for instance if you want to see what are different jobs available you can basically uh, go to uh, sys copy jobs uh, table and you can see all the all the jobs, uh, copy jobs uh, listed over here. Uh, there's another command which you can use to see the copy job details, uh, which I forgot to mention here, but just telling you that there's another table which you can use to see the sys uh, to see the job details. Now, if you want to see history of the job, so when you run this uh, uh, the run this SQL query, basically you get copy job ID, and with that copy job ID, you can see more details. So, for instance, for a particular uh, job, if you want to see what has been the load history, I mean. 
how many times data has been loaded and and that kind of thing then uh, basically you can use this particular um this this particular uh, sql query over here to uh, see the history of the uh, jobs um, uh, job loads job data loads uh, and Similarly, if you uh, run this particular query, you can see if any point of time any load error has happened. And load error can happen due to many reasons. Uh, suddenly, the format of data was not good when it, was, when it came to S3 bucket, or um, the IM role which you have been using to read data from S3 bucket, and someone went uh, go went ahead and 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 changed the change the permission of it or someone deleted table yeah it could be at, at, as funny as that as well uh, but yeah if any of those errors are happening then you can go to this particular table and you can see if what are the exceptions raised by job copy job so you do have monitoring capability where you can go and look into tables and can uh, find out uh, if any uh, history and, and and errors related to the job few considerations to keep in mind first of all uh, it, this feature is right now under preview uh, that means uh, if you want to test it now you have to launch your cluster with this uh, preview maintenance track um, it is not generally available um, but that is what it now I mean I'm sure it will be generally available at some point of time soon uh, and second is that um, it, this copy uh, job works with the new files coming. It does not work with any existing files. So uh, suppose you had a file one dot CSV. Uh, you put it to S3 bucket and it got copied uh, to Redshift. Now if you again put file one dot CSV, which is basically overriding, overwriting the existing file, then that new data will not be copied. So keep this in mind that it does not, um, it does not, tr the, the copy job does not, does not trigger if you are overwriting any existing file or content or modifying the content. It works only when the new file comes. So that's something you have to keep in mind that whenever data, new data is coming to S3 bucket, which you want to be auto copied, then uh, you need to uh, have a new, always have a new file name. You cannot simply overwrite some existing file and expect that it will be copied through the copy job. Uh, if you want that kind of mechanism, you have to go back to the, what I talked about earlier, automation, where you have to hook into S3 uh, event um, and then uh, use Lambda to call a uh, Redshift uh, data API. Uh, this copy job works with new files coming only. Okay, time for demo. So it's a very small presentation and then let's do some demo. So what I have done over here is that, uh, this is the AWS Management Console. Uh, I have created a sales folder under Dojo Dataset uh, bucket. And right now I'm keeping it, uh, keeping it empty. And uh, then what I do is that, uh, let me do one thing. Let me open this folder. Okay, and move it over here. Yeah, fair enough. So, um, yeah. So, what I will do is that um, we, this is a folder where I'm going to keep copying my files and I will expect that Redshift cluster will automatically uh, copy it. And what uh, data I'm going to copy, let me show you that one. So, if I oops, go over here. Yeah, here we go. So, I have three files, cells1.csv. Uh, um, uh, which has customer ID, name, and total sales, um, some two records. Sales2.csv, same structure, but uh, uh, two records. Uh, and then Sales3 has also got same structure, but two records. So this is the uh, data which I'm going to um, copy into uh, the uh, S3 bucket. So what I will do now is um, I will go to Redshift. So uh, here I have launched a Redshift cluster. And, um, and you can see this Redshift cluster has been launched uh, with uh, uh, preview configuration. Uh, and, uh, uh, and, and I have configured uh, this Redshift cluster with, uh, if I go to properties, I think I can probably show you that thing. Um, uh, they, uh, this Redshift cluster has been configured with uh, one IAM role. 
yeah this im role dojo redshift uh, im role uh, and this im role gives redshift cluster permission to read data from s3 bucket okay so that's something to keep in mind it's similar to copy command i mean what you have to do for copy command is similar to that now how do i launch this kind of uh, preview cluster it's pretty simple so if i go to another tab if you go to redshift you will see uh, a, a button like this say hey, create a preview cluster so you click on that particular button uh, and then uh, what you do is that um, you can give your cluster name over here and here you can simply select um, uh, preview 2022 uh, and that's it I mean uh, rest of the configuration similar to Redshift configuration and then you can launch a cluster uh, which is um, yeah which is um, uh, which is based on the preview uh, uh, maintenance track um, and you can see it is not use it is not supported for for production use it is r currently in in preview so but if you want to test it and you want to understand how it works you can launch this preview cluster and can make use of it okay so let's do this way um so let's uh, first create a table so what i will do is that i will go to my cluster and say i want to query uh, using um, yeah, and why it is doing that? Let me open up my files over here. Uh, okay. Okay, let it open. And meanwhile, I will go to here and go to my. Yeah, here we go. So I have kept my file open in my other screen. Uh, so first thing first, you can see uh, my cluster is ready. Um, and um, I have got uh, my uh, dev database uh, public schema under that. So what I'm going to do first thing is I'm going to create a table in Redshift cluster database, I mean. So I'll simply um, create a table. So this table uh, has the same structure as my file. So it has customer ID integer, name, varchar 100, and sales is decimal. Let's run this command, uh, like SQL. And when I do that, uh, it will create a table for me. And uh, now I can uh, go ahead and see uh, what data is there in this uh, table. And that should be empty. Okay, so if I do that, I, get, I should get zero. Otherwise, I'll be surprised. Um, and yeah, you can see that there are no rows to show. So what I'm going to do now, that now I'm going to create my copy job. So for that, I simply run the command uh, or SQL. So I'm saying copy uh, to sales table, which I just created uh, from this particular uh, bucket. And this is the IM role, which I'm using to, um, yeah, uh, of course, um, uh, authorize my Redshift cluster to talk to S3 bucket. Data format is auto. Ignore the header because header is the column names. That's not data. Uh, delimiter is comma. Ignore blanks. And then it is in the island region. This is the job name. And it is auto on. So when I run this command, basically, Redshift will start looking into any new files coming into my uh, S3 bucket and then we'll uh, keep um, um, keep copying it so if I run this command yeah you can see um, I have got um, yeah it has gone successful now I'm all set so what I'm, I'm going to do is that I go to my uh, S3 bucket and let me try to do first few set of data copy so what I will do uh, from my other screen Let's copy sales one and sales two. So if I bring sales one and sales two, sales one and sales two, upload it. And now um, if everything goes fine, I am expecting that I will, um, yeah, I will, I will get these files uh, should be get copied. So let's uh, be a little courageous and start making query now. So if I say select, count star from sales. Oh, I got two file copied already. Okay. And more. 
four files copied. So you see, all four records, like four records copied. So if I go and say, okay, fair enough, automatic, it happened automatically and in, in almost no time. So if I run it, uh, it says, yeah, these are the files which are got copied from uh, my um, my my uh, my um, uh, S3 bucket. Now let me do one more thing. So I will go over here and say, okay, now I want to do some more file upload and let me upload one more file. And that is my sales three. And if I upload sales three over here, close it, go back to my cluster, run this query again and not yet not yet not yet not yet okay let's give it some time okay okay not yet okay let's change probably this is my lucky sql so let me count first Oh yeah, looks like it's my lucky sequel, okay? Fair enough, so if I go back to my star again, uh, um, yeah, it should show me all six records, so it's copies. So you can see, you saw that how uh, basically you can, um, uh, you can, um, uh, simply configure your copy job and then as uh, as soon as you drop data into S3 bucket, it's get automatically copied to Redshift cluster. Now. Let's see a few things from monitoring point of view. So first of all, first of all, I want to go and see uh, my um, my SQL job uh, uh, list of SQL li list of copy jobs. So if I run this comma, let's SQL uh, select star from sys copy um, uh, job. It shows me that hey, there is a, is a sales job um, and. Um, uh, yeah, I mean it has got this job ID and and so on and so forth, um, and uh, this is the data source. And if you go and see, you can see more details over here. Yeah, it is, is auto uh, and on error it suspends, and these are the copy queries uh, it is using. This is the IAM role it is using. So you can see all the details uh, about uh, your job. Now, if you want to see um, my uh, my history of run. Uh, then, yeah, let's run this SQL over here. So I want to go from load history. So I simply use the, that same um, uh, uh, job ID, uh, 105757. You can see here that you have to make note of. And it's saying, okay, so I should run it again. And Hopefully, soon, I should see a result. Or probably it's still populating, I don't know. Um, come on, show me history. Yeah, so it shows here that, um, and this is this result goes little different, I don't know why. Uh, probably it's, that's, not, that's, not, that's different from my expectations. So you can see here, it shows only one record. But if I go to oops, go to right hand side, it shows that status is completed. Um, what was the start time, end time, duration, and oops, total um, yeah, total um, loaded rows is six. Okay, and file count scanned is four. Uh, so, so uh, this this information is a little different from how I will particularly like personally expect from the history point of view. I was expecting probably to show you multiple multiple lines uh, that okay this got got loaded, but it's kind of showing a summary of the history, not line by line history. Um, but nevertheless, that's how it is. Um, then. Uh, if I run uh, another uh, SQL which shows how to uh, see the any exceptions happening with your with your uh, with your uh, jobs, so I can go, go and look into the load error uh, table. So now, if I run this particular query, it should not show anything because all my three um, job runs were successful. So um, uh, it should show the result anytime now with uh, no no exception so yeah there's nothing that means there are no error and we, we saw that i mean all three got copied successfully 
So that was all I wanted to show you today uh, about uh, automated copy of data from S3 bucket to Redshift cluster database. Um, hope you like the video. And if you like, please click on the like button. Please subscribe to my channel. I promise to come back again in a week's time with another such video. In the meantime, please stay safe and have a nice day. Bye-bye.